Hey everybody, thanks for joining. I'm Melanie Garibay and welcome to Wine Time with Nectar of the Dogs. We are, um, you know, here today, the last couple weeks, obviously, well, for a lot of people, myself included, we've been having these virtual happy hours with our, our colleagues and our families and friends because of COVID-19. So last week, as I was sitting there drinking my wine with my dogs, um, I thought, how can we, how can we help? How can we, you know, help support small business? And how can we um, maybe give a voice to some of these dog rescue organizations who are having problems, obviously having their dogs adopted? Um, so I came up with the idea of wine time with nectar of the dogs. Um, and the, you know, the purpose, the reason we're going to do this is, is like I just said, to try to help stimulate the business and give some voice to, to some local um, organizations. So we're going to do this. This is the first one tonight uh, featuring Chiquita's Friends, but we're going to plan to do one every Friday for the next four weeks um, featuring local organizations. And if we get a really good response, maybe we'll throw in some wine Wednesdays, you know, since it's always good to drink. Um, so I hope that you have your glass of wine right now. I, I hope that it's Nectar of the Dogs wine, but if it's not, any wine will do. Um, so cheers. Um, you know, here at Nectar of the Dogs wine, our motto is, you're never really drinking alone if your dog is with you. My dogs are actually right there. You can't see them, but they're, they're sleeping. Um, you know, and it's always cool to drink with your dog, but sometimes you don't want to drink alone. You want to have another two-legged person for some conversation. So we obviously can't do that because of circumstances that we're all familiar with. Um, but I would like to see what my director of PR, Monica Pontrelli, is doing over at, um, over at her house in uh, Northridge. So Monica, what's happening? What's going on? Hey, how's it going? Cheers. <laughs> Super bummed I can't be there with you. Now I have to drink this whole bottle of wine by myself. <laughs> um, well, I'm sure that's not going to be too difficult. Um, you know, we, uh, we have all of our wines are limited edition varietals. I think you might be able to see a few of them here. Um, I'm not going to get into each one tonight because, you know, why? Uh, we're going to be featuring a different varietal over the next few weeks. But what we're going to be drinking tonight is our Three Dogs White. Uh, this is our first blend. It's a 2017. It's predominantly um, uh, v &A. It's got a little Gewürztraminer and a teeny tiny kiss of late harvest Muscat Canale. I like to say teeny tiny kiss when I do my tastings. Um, it is not a sweet wine. That's actually the next phrase out of my mouth when I say late harvest Muscat Canale. It's not sweet um, simply because I don't like sweet wines. Uh, it's bright and fruity. It's got, uh, you know, good crisp acidity. It's $30 a bottle. Um, and we're running some, some specials, you know, in light of the COVID-19. So right now you can go to the website and we're offering 30% discounts for all, all cases of wine, single varietals. And then we have a couple of mixed cases on there as well. Um, this is my little dog, Vinny, who, who poses for me when I try to take him out in the backyard. Uh, I usually take about, I don't know, 50 pictures or 100 pictures to try to find one. But, uh, but that's Vin, my little dapple dachshund. And uh, yeah, so that's what we're going to be drinking tonight. Cheers. So, Monica? Cheers. <laughs> okay, we're drinking, Sorry. right? <laughs> mm. Yeah, Melanie, the wine, the wine's great. And I'd have to say, if I had to pick a favorite out of all of them, Three Dogs White is it. I don't know why, but it is. It's okay. Um, why People... don't we uh, talk about the story and, and tell us how you started Nectar of the Dogs Wine. Okay, cool, cool. I was just going to say, though, people ask me all the time, like, what's your favorite? And I have to say they are all my favorite. I have, you know, different moods and different times. But, um, yeah, I agree. I'm actually loving the Three Dogs White lately a lot, too. A lot. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so the, the company was started in 2015, and it was really a way for us to honor our own dogs who, who inspired us, you know, the love that we had for them. Um, the dogs, our dogs, uh, passed onto the Rainbow Bridge. But we thought, well, wow, what if we could start a wine company and, um, you know, give back to dog rescue organizations? So it was really as simple as that. That was the, was the core reason why we founded the company. Um, today, we still try to, you know, continue on that mission as best we can. We give 10% of our proceeds to various dog rescue organization. And um, on the label, uh, let's see, all of the labels actually feature our dogs that passed on to the Rainbow Bridge. And these are our four dogs. This was Connie and Clyde and Floyd and Mika. Um, Connie and Clyde were my dogs that I got when I was 27 years old. I had them um, until they were 16 and 17. So you can imagine how much your life changes in, in 16 and 17 years. 
um, but I had them from puppies until they passed in, in my arms, um, fortunately. Uh, so they're very, very special to me. Um, Floyd was a little, a little wiener dog that we found on the street, uh, literally found on the street. Um, everybody teases me and they said that you didn't put signs up saying that you found a dog, but I did and nobody claimed him. So we had him for two years. He was an older dog. Uh, he died of heart disease, but um, we gave him the best two years of his life. So he is featured on our uh, CCF McMurphy. And then Mika is our Husky who uh, she just thought she was a dachshund. But anyway, these are four of the dogs. Uh, the other ones you can see on the website. So moving on, I just wanted to talk a little bit about what is happening with currently with Nectar of the Dogs Wine. Um, we, you know, we had a really lot of good momentum at the beginning of the year, thanks to Monica and her PR efforts. And I also have a social media team that helps me. Um, but we had a bunch of events on the calendar and, you know, these dog adoption events that we were doing. Obviously, everything has been canceled. So I know that there's so many different virtual wine events. Um, they're just popping up every day. And ours is, is pretty simple. You basically just go to NectarOfTheDogsWine.com and buy a mixed case of wine. Or you can buy a single varietal. Uh, they're all 30% off, as I mentioned before. Um, these are the two options here with the pricing. All of this stuff is on the website. Um, and once you buy your wine, then you just email me or you can email Monica and we'll set up a, a date and a time to do a Zoom meeting. Uh, we started this a little bit earlier as private wine tastings where you would buy a case, you would invite you know, 10 or 20 people to your home, and then I would come and tell the story. Since that's not possible now, we're turning it into virtual. Um, so if you're interested in any of that, uh, please email me or Monica. We can answer any questions that you may have. And, and I know that you know there's it's, it's really tough right now for a lot of people. Maybe wine is not priority on your list, but if you want to grab a couple friends or somebody on your family, maybe um, you know then then that you can split a case between you and we can do the virtual tasting. There's no right or wrong at this time in life, so um, we're just we're and doing we what we can. We have to remember that you know when you when you buy wine with us, it's more that we can give back to the rescues. Um, you know, maybe Mel, you can tell everyone how much we've donated so far to, to the various rescues that we've worked with. That's true, that's true. Um, we're really excited to say that to date, we've given over $7,000 to various dog rescue organizations, um, including All American Dogs and Rescue, uh, Bark Party, the SPCA LA, Pet Orphans of Southern California, uh, Tony LaRusse's Our Foundation, and then most recently, Chiquita's Friends, that's our, our newest partnership. So. Um, you know, these are just some of the bigger ones we, we give when we can to as many as we can, but those are just some, some to date. Um, as I also mentioned, Monica has been awesome in, uh, you know, expanding our um, opportunities, I should say. But one that I actually did on my own um, was I got us some distribution at Cornell Winery. Uh, that is up on Mulholland Highway. And I recommend if you've never been out there to, to get out there. Unfortunately, like many of the wineries right now, they are closed, but our wine will be available for sale as soon as they reopen. Um, Tim and his staff are wonderful people, and that's where we do our dog adoption events. So with that distribution, we had the opportunity to um, fortunately meet Ger uh, Geraldine Gilliland, and um, we did an event back in February 8th, I think, Monica. Uh, so Monica, why don't you tell us what happened to you at the February 8th event? Well, <laughs> Melanie, <laughs> at that event, we adopted this cute little guy. <laughs> we have two cats, but uh, we saw we saw this guy and just fell in love right away. Um, yeah, Geraldine and her and her team had about eight or nine of these adorable puppies there at the event, and you know we were checking them out, and they were just the coolest, sweetest, mild-mannered puppies there. And this one, of course, was laying on his back, just couldn't care about anything, just happy as can be, and we just fell in love. So we filled out the application. They called us a couple days later and came um, just to meet with us to make sure that you know we were serious about taking on this responsibility and uh, you know just ensuring that our yard was safe and secure for him. Um, and she left us here with him at the end of the meeting. Um, he was fully neutered. He had all of his shots microchipped uh, it was super easy and we couldn't have been happier um, and you can tell right away he was well taken care of just beautiful and happy dog that so we were yeah happy i remember him yeah. he was so cute totally cute yeah and he did find a good home he's he's lucky um so he's fitting right in the cat probably tell you a different story but 
<laughs> you what? The cats would probably tell you a different oh. story about how happy he is here and how, how well he's fitting in with the family. But <laughs> I'm sure he's doing just great. It's looking out. Well, that's awesome. <laughs> we actually, we had a, a couple of other friends adopt a, a dog that day as well, um, Isla. And yeah, I think three dogs got adopted, but Geraldine can confirm. I think she's, maybe it was five. I'm not sure. But anyway, um, Todd, why don't we take a look at the video from that February 8th event, and then uh, we'll talk to Geraldine and see what she's got going on. That event was so fun, so fun. Uh, Geraldine, how are you? I'm good, Melody, how are you? Really, really good. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Geraldine Gilliland of Chiquita's Friends. And uh, it looks like you've got a couple of friends there, Geraldine, from what I can see. I have a new litter of puppies that just crossed from Mexico, I'm gonna say about two weeks ago. They're about six weeks old and um, there are four of them, so I actually think you should do a four-dog wine for next year. Okay? <laughs> Always a possibility, um, yes. And, and by the way, thank you, Monica, for adopting McAdoo, and thank you, Melody, because the, at that adoption, we adopted out five dogs that Great. day, but then there was the residual follow-up of people that wanted the same dog, but they ended up taking another dog. So. All of the nine Tijuana Terriers got adopted. Every single That's one. Awesome. That's awesome. Awesome, awesome. So Geraldine, tell us a little bit, um, you know, you have a lot on your plates, not only with your restaurant that you may or may not want to elaborate on right now, considering what's happening, um, but starting this organization, uh, just, you know, from discussions we've had and what I've read, you're a saint. So why don't you tell us a little bit on, on what inspired you to start Chiquita's Friends? Well, my mother should have let me have a dog growing up. That's all I can say. Um, I, I never had a dog until I met my husband and I got my first dog. Her name was Chiquita. And we just started rescuing dogs in the mm, early 90s, I would say. Mm -hmm. And we moved to Malibu and um, I, I became really passionate about it. And he was really patient with me. He had no idea of what he was starting. And um, I actually started rescuing beagles. Uh, I, I have a real fondness for beagles. I've worked with Beagle Freedom Project and uh, many friends of, of different organizations. But right now, I, my focus is on Mexico. And you, you mentioned my restaurant. I am um, currently closed. Um, I've owned a Mexican restaurant called Lula Cocina Mexicana mm -hmm. on Main Street in Santa Monica for 29 years. Wow. And today it was really painful. I have to tell you, I had to go in there and turn off the gas and turn off the water and empty the food and give, I mean, just give away as much stuff as I could um, right. and just to prepare for what we don't know. We, we, we don't know what's going to happen. I laid off 25 people who have been with me, some of them for 29 years. So, That's tough. Uh, it's tough. And that was my main source of income to fund the rescue because mm -hmm. I'm such a small rescue and I don't have any paid employees. Um, your organization, for example, was really generous, by the way, at the event at Cornell Wine Testing Room. Thank you. I mean, that's a huge thing for us. I just took 10 dogs across the border yesterday. It took, it took about 10 different women, Mexican, American, pick up points between Tecate, Tijuana, 
um, Carlsbad, and it is not easy to get dogs across the border because you have to get all the vaccinations. It's really expensive. Right. But, like, these dogs, for instance, this is Panda, Panda 1 and Panda 2. There are four puppies, and her, their mother is sitting behind, oh, she's, she's sitting on the floor. They were born on the streets of Tijuana, and I saw them on a Facebook post, and I said, I cannot let them die. I cannot. Mm -hmm. This is my second, third litter. And so the T1 Terriers was the first litter. Oh, Patchy, yes. Oh, my God, I have Patchy. And, um, he, he did. Pat, That's Patchy so cute. It's it. so, yeah, so, so amazing, cats. Geraldine. I mean, I can't, I don't know. I, I fostered one uh, wiener dog and I'm a failed foster. He's actually, that's our Vinny right there. But, um, you know, what you do is really amazing. And I just I can't thank you enough. I mean, you and, and people like you who have small organizations. Um, let's take a look. Actually, I know we pulled some dogs from your website and you said that these dogs are currently available, correct? I see Sadie oh, and yes. Lady and Aaron. Oh, Sadie, Lady and Aaron and Ariana and Zorro and Stella and... And Bixie. Else? Bixie and Bixie. Bruce. Bruce isn't up there. And then I've got all these new puppies. Oh, not Bruce, Diego. <laughs> That's um, so cute. I mean, so everybody can go to the Chiquita's Friends website and see currently the dogs that are available for adoption, correct? Yes, except we got 10 more yesterday, which we haven't posted yet. But and like then, Monica, Monica said we try to get them spayed and neutered and all their shots and chipped before we send them off to their forever homes. Right. Now, when you get the dogs, um, I mean, do you name them all or do you, who, who names them? Well, um, I'm sitting right here now with Gabriel Harris, who is one of my caregivers here at Cornell. Uh -huh. Also a winemaker, Sage Hill. Um, I've had Sage Hill, Hill, really love it. We love Sage Hill. Um, and she's really good at naming names. I mean, come on, Panda. Look at this little <laughs> one. How old is Aaron? How old is Aaron? Aaron, I I honestly can't remember. <laughs> um, maybe it says young. Young. He's I think the, maybe yeah. one or two years old. Very cute. Look at that face. Oh my gosh. Yeah, and then Sadie and Liddy are young too, but we've decided they have to go together. Sometimes. That's just the way it is. Right. Uh, right. Right. A lot of these, a lot of these dogs are really timid, um, beyond frightened. If you, uh, the the mother and the five puppies we got yesterday are. I haven't even met them yet. I just got here. They are petrified right. apparently of human beings. Look at Dixie. He's so. I mean, adorable. I can imagine they're living on the streets of Tijuana, and you know, from day to day, no food. Why? I mean, just they don't know what their their you know lot in life is going to be, but. It's just amazing, and they look so happy in these pictures, and I really, really hope that they do, you know, find good homes. It's just, it breaks well, my heart, but I... amazing adoption coordinator, Julie Levin. I have to give her a shout-out here. Mm -hmm. um, because not only, I'm going to cry, um, not only <laughs> does she do all the adoption paperwork like she did for Monica, but she actually drives and gets them. Wow. She goes to the border of Mexico, and anywhere I ask her to go, she's there. That's amazing. That's just absolutely amazing. Well, you know, I really am looking forward to um, getting back to our live events. And, and like I said, I know we had the, or maybe I didn't say, but we had another adoption event scheduled on March 14th. And we canceled that, ironically, uh, just because it was raining. It was before really? all of the mandatory COVID-19. You know, it would have been yeah. canceled anyway. But I can't wait to get back to Cornell and do these dog adoption, uh, you know, wine tastings because that's why we do what we do. I mean, this that's that's what this Can company is founded on. And we, yeah. we need a case of we need a case of rosé. I can do that. Yes, thirty percent off case of rosé. Wine, <laughs> need wine. <laughs> Everybody needs wine. So let me just—I have a little bit of a call to action here. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, any wine orders that we get from right now, April 3rd until April 9th, we're going to donate 10% of those wine sales to Chiquita's friends to help all of these cute little dogs and to help Geraldine in this time of, of crisis. You know, she's 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 basically unemployed, um, but you know we want to do what we can do to help. So we just ask that you guys do what you can do to help. Again, I know that there's a lot of people struggling, so pitch in for a case. Uh, you know, do what do what you can do. 
Uh, you can check us out on our website. You can order the wine on the website, nectarofthedogswine.com. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook, uh, Nectar of the Dogs Wine. And uh, Geraldine's, or, uh, sorry, Geraldine's information is there as well. Um, and then also too, you know, we have the next four, sorry, the next three Fridays, we do have some organizations that we're gonna be featuring, um, SPCA LA, uh, oh. Bark Party, and then I think we have Love at First Mutt, Monica, if I'm correct in saying that. And then, um, but if you are interested in, in being on here, on our, on our webcast, email, me or Monica and uh, you know, like I said, maybe we can do wine Wednesdays or I don't know, taco Tuesdays or happy Thursdays or you know, Monday's a good time for wine too. So we're, we're open. So I just wanna thank you Geraldine uh, for joining us. Um, cheers to you and everything that you do and we will definitely keep in touch and let's hope that you know, we get a lot of wine orders and, uh, and then we'll just see where it goes from there. And I, you know what I love that you can mix a kiss. I love Absolutely. that. You can mix a case and I'm going to say just, you know, if you go on the website and there's, you don't see what you want, just email me and uh, we'll, we'll make it happen. It's, it's me and Monica right now. So we can, we can do that. So uh, Monica, are you there? I'm here. I think you are. All right, cool. <laughs> Cheers. Where are you Cheers. in your, <laughs> so we're like right there almost. Um, anything yeah. else that you want to add or talk about or, you know? Well, I don't know. Do you want to take everyone real quickly through all the varietals? Just let everyone know what we have. So when they go to the website, they, they know what to look sure. for. Sure. Oh, thank you. That's it. Yes. Thank you, Monica. Um, every wine that we do is a limited edition varietal. And what we currently have are five different ones. We have our Three Dogs White, which I just mentioned. Um, we also have our uh, latest one. This is our Rosé of Pinot Noir. This is our red blend from Paso Robles. This is um, called CCF McMurphy. This is the label that Floyd is featured on. Um, it's 80% Cab, 20% Cab Franc from the Templeton Gap and Estrella districts of Paso Robles. I know some people say Paso Robles, Paso Robles. I'm not sure if there's a right or wrong, but Robles. any Robles, Robles, my, my Robles. I got a <laughs> Robles here. Okay. Um, then we have our Rosé of Malbec. This is one of our best sellers. Actually, this is available at uh, Cornell Winery. In addition to the CCF McMurphy, we're running low on this one, but uh, yeah, I highly recommend. Get it while that. you can. What's that? said get it while you can get it while you can and then this is our 2015 um, chardonnay from lodi so our first varietal actually was a 2014 chardonnay from from lodi um, it was a varietal or sorry the yeah before this one this is not your traditional like you know heavy oaky chardonnay why because i don't like that kind of chardonnay uh, so um, it's but it's still it's very crisp it's got a great body um, a smooth mouth feel so beautiful wine this one is also available at cornell winery um, and i'm looking to bring on four additional varietals this year so you know you just if if you want to buy the wine and you find something you like buy it because we may or may not have it later on down the line and um, we also have a small wine club there's information on the, on the website about that as well and, uh, you know, if you have any questions, then email me or email Monica. We're happy to, to answer them. And, um, yeah, we just wanted to say thank you guys for tuning in. Um, cheers to you all. Happy. Thank God it's Friday. Thank God it's Friday. <laughs> um, cheers. And may dogs continue to bless your life. That's what we're really all about. Um, wine and dogs. I swear, if I could just quit my job, my day job, and drink wine and pet dogs all day long, I'd be in heaven. I think a lot of people would, too. But. That's not reality. So anyway, happy Friday, you guys. We'll see you next uh, next Friday at 5 o'clock. We're going to be talking to Miriam Davenport from SPCA LA to see what they've got going on. And um, yeah, cheers.